Well, good morning. This is Pastor Marvin Osborne, First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio. I hope you're well today. Um, this picks up where we left off yesterday, and uh, same topic, different passage, New Testament passage. We're looking in, in Romans 12, 19 through 21. We're talking about living in a hostile world where things are getting hotter and hotter, where our beliefs are are so um, abhorrent to the world today, it's so evident to the world today, that we become a target, we become a, you know, the, uh, the, the lightning rod, so to speak, uh, you know, for all their venom. And how are we, as believers, supposed to react? Are we supposed to be tolerant and just accept everybody? We're tired of being picked on. We don't want to be picked on. We don't want to be different. So we're going to open the doors up and let every wind of doctrine and every uh, a form of a lifestyle to come in and we're not going to preach on sin. Well, obviously not. That is nonsense. I know that's a, what a lot of churches are doing. We have a church down the road that has a, one of those rainbow flags outside so that they can let they, everybody know that hey, they're a gay-loving church. Well, you know what? We love gay people here, but we love the Word of God more. And uh, we're going to preach the Word of God and we're praying that gay people like heterosexual people will, uh, will repent of their sins because we're all sinners, regardless of, of this level of sin and in need of the Savior. And without repentance, without receiving Jesus Christ as their Savior, all are lost. But how are we supposed to react? It says in Romans 12, 19 through 20, Dearly beloved, so he's talking to believers, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. We'll stop there. He says, Avenge not yourself. We have a choice. He, he's saying here that when hostile situations come, either we can handle it or we can let God handle it. The choice is ours. If you want to handle it, God says you can handle it, but understand, I'm stepping out of it. This is not my fight any longer. You handle what you want to handle, and if you want me to take care of it, I'll take care of it. It says, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Let God do what God does. If we're standing in the way, God's not going to come around us, push us out of the way to handle the situation. He says, avenge not yourself, rather give a uh, place under wrath. It is writ uh, written, vengeance is mine. What is he saying? Vengeance is not your territory. Vengeance is not where we are to step into. Vengeance belongs to God. When we choose to avenge ourselves of a situation where if someone says this to me, I'm going to say it back. If they do this, then I'm going to do that. It's not talking about protecting yourselves. It's saying that you found an opportunity to get back of them, back at them. He says that shouldn't be. He says, vengeance is mine. It's my territory. I'll handle it. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, but what is your responsibility, believer? If, if vengeance belongs to God, we'll let him take care of it. But what do we do in the meantime? That's what he says. Therefore, if, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt keep coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Romans 12, 19 through 21. So we see this is very similar to our passage we talked about yesterday. In other words... God has a role when when we're persecuted, when we're when evil comes upon us, when people treat us uh, wrong, and we have a role in how we are to respond to it. We're gonna we're supposed to get out of the way and let God handle how He's going to handle things. And you and I need to do what we're supposed to do, and that means that you know what, as we see need, we are to meet that need. If they're hungry. We make sure they have food. If they're thirsty, we make sure they have drink. If they need clothes, you know what? We need to make sure they have clothes. If they, if we see them broken down on the side of the road, I imagine that we need to stop and give them a ride, uh, or call AAA, or or call a tow truck, or call an emergency person, or or whatever else. In other words, we're not supposed to take a light in the need of others. Rather, but we use those those needs and those troubles in their life as an opportunity to build bridges and certainly an opportunity as a doorway to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says, be not overcome with evil. Don't let yourself 
be dragged into a situation where I'm going to be hostile with him, but overcome evil with good. Now, there's a lot of people who will come up to you and they want to push your buttons and they will see how you react. And the Bible says how we are to react. And we're supposed to look for opportunity to bless and not curse, to help and not hurt. We are to uh, not be uh, not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. In other words, as we do good to those people who hate us and despitefully use us and say all manner of evil against us, you know what? Our good will ultimately outweigh uh, what they're saying it, when it, it, it verifies what we believe if not for that person but can you imagine his children or his uh, his neighbors or maybe the co-workers there this guy is, is constantly harassing you and you're doing good uh, to, to them you're trying to be nice and it doesn't mean you're weak it doesn't mean you're any of those things it just means you're doing what God would want you to do I think it's a testimony to everyone around that your faith is real Got some people that are kind of pushing your buttons. People that uh, you're struggling with, maybe in the workplace. Do good to them. Bless them today. And see what God does. You may not see a short-term uh, reaction. But we're in this. This is not a sprint. It's a marathon. We continue to do good. And say, oh, I did something for him last year. And he didn't even say thank you. That's all right. Remember yesterday's passage said that the Lord will reward us. In Proverbs 25. 21 through 22. We do this as unto the Lord, and the Lord will reward us. Amen? Amen. Remember that God loves you, and I love you as well. And I'll talk to you soon.